Hi, I'm Jay McMullen. I'm starting a video series on the very basics of guitars. I have a friend that's been wanting to learn to play for quite a while and she just is having a hard time finding basic uh, guitar instruction online. Everything she gets is just way over her head. Uh, some of it's even over my head. I've been playing for a number of years. But we're going to talk about that today. How do you learn how to play guitar? Let's start with the very basics though. Let's go all the way back. Let's say you've never touched a guitar in your life, but yet you'd really like to learn to play. Well, let's talk about that. There are different kinds of guitars. There are acoustic guitars, and you'll see almost every country band is going to have a few of those in there. Uh, there are electric guitars. Most of those have a solid body where the acoustic guitar has a, a box. As a matter of fact, they used to call them flat top boxes. And the sound is able to reverberate inside that sound box and come out the sound hole. And that's how you get so much sound out of a, um, an acoustic guitar. Electric guitars, on the, on the other hand, mostly are solid wood. And so when you play those and they're not hooked up to an amplifier, you'll notice that they're really very quiet. They don't make much noise. But there are a lot of cool things to do with electric guitar. But starting out, let's get you an acoustic guitar. Just an, You don't have to be fancy. You can spend about as much money as you want to. If you want to spend... $10,000 on a guitar, simple, easy to do. If you want to spend $75 on a guitar, you can do that too. But obviously, the more money you pay, the more uh, quality you're going to get. Sometimes you're just buying the name. Some of the big manufa uh, guitar manufacturers in the country right now are uh, Martin. They've been around for over 100 years. As a matter of fact, a few years ago, they put out their 100th anniversary uh, guitar. And oh, my word, it had... Uh, it was beautiful. It had mother of pearl inlay all over. It had solid gold laid into it. Uh, the only problem was the price was a hundred thousand dollars, and they came and they only made so I think a hundred of them. So I don't know who all bought those, but somebody that uh, I'm way not even close to their pay range. So anyway, what I, I don't want you to go spend hundreds and hundreds or even thousands of dollars on a guitar. Uh, if you live near a guitar center, that's the name of a store, guitar center. Go in that guitar center and go back to where they keep their guitars. Take some down and, and mess around with them. Play a little bit on them. Or if you can't play, have one of the clerks there to show you guitars and kind of the difference in what there is. The, like I say, the name brands right now are Martin, uh, Gibson, and you're going to pay a pretty penny if you get a standard guitar. Then Martin used to put out a second uh, or a cheaper price guitar that they called Sigma and I bought a 12 string not after not long after I learned the kind of chord I bought a Sigma 12 string and I was about broke at the time I was pastoring a church and and I you know you, you can make fun of pastors all you want but 90% of them barely make enough to get by but I made that on made payments on that over a period of time and I think I paid $250 my first guitar though was called a Hondo 2 acoustic guitar the strings were so far off the fretboard and I'll show you all that in a minute that and I wanted to learn to play so bad that my fingers would literally bleed. One of the things you're going to do as you play more, you're going to build, you're going to build up calluses on the tips of your fingers. And that's from pressing on the strings. That's what you want to do is build these calluses because they help protect you and you don't, you can bruise the end of your fingertips and it is not fun. It stays sore for days. I've told some people when they're first starting out, they can take some thick super glue and put a little coating on each finger and let it set. And that gives you a little protection starting off. But your calluses will build pretty quick if you play every day. So anyway, Martins are a good brand. Gibsons are really good. But the problem, Martins and Gibsons are both very expensive. I mean, they're, they're super expensive because you're buying mostly name. Like I say, the secondary the, or the least expensive Martin used to be the Sigma. Well, eventually they quit making guitars under that name. And now they sell the le less expensive guitars under the actual Martin name brand. Uh, Gibson sells their lower price guitars under the name of Epiphone, E-P-I-P-H-O-N-E, -E, Epiphone. John Lennon with the Beatles used to play Epiphone, but at that time, Epiphone was a completely different country company than Gibson. And somewhere along the line, Gibson took them over and they put out their least expensive guitars through them. I was in Guitar Center one day, <clears throat> excuse me, in Winter Park, Florida, and I was playing some of the really nice guitars in the back in this room. And Anyway, as I walked out, you walk into a larger room that has hundreds of guitars. 
and they're the least expensive. So anyway, I saw an Epiphone there, and it said a master build, and I'd never heard of that at the time. This has been a few years ago. But I pulled it off the wall, and I played that thing, and it was where I'd been playing guitars that were like $3,000, $5,000. This guitar cost right at 500 at the time and sounded as good or better than a lot of the more expensive guitars I played. So don't feel like because you're spending so much more money that it's really going to make you a better player or sound better. That's not always the case. Uh, so don't spend a lot of money. You know, if you have the money, buy something around $500 or maybe get something between $150 and $500. Don't get one that's $75 or uh, something like that. But get something probably between, I'd say really between $200 and $500. And if you look for a used guitar, you can find some pretty good deals. And uh, But just get you something that's decent that's going to stick with you. Chances are you're going to keep that guitar for years. Uh, I bought my 12-string in 1987 or so, and now it's 2020. I still have it. I still play it occasionally. Uh, don't get a 12-string because, like it says, it has 12 strings instead of 6. You literally you hold the chords just like you do on a regular 6-string. But it's a little harder to learn how to pick out certain notes and stuff like that because you do have extra strings on it. Start with it, and you'll find yourself you don't use it that a lot on gigs or anything else. Uh, the only person I can really think of that really, that's what they always played was a 12-string, was Lead Belly, the black uh, blues player. And I love his music, but I tell you, it's not as easy playing a 12-string as it is a 6-string. It's a little easier on your fingers, I believe, because your fingers are spread out more across the wire you have less pounds per square inch I guess in your fingers as you're playing but get just regular 12 six string guitar uh, let's talk about the the different parts of a guitar the guitar I'll get my Gibson there are several parts that make up a guitar let me see if I can zoom out wide enough to get this in here I think I'm all the way out yeah anyway this is a good Gibson uh, uh, J200 and it is made of maple and with a, with a uh, spruce top. What they do, this is the guitar body. This whole big back thing here is the body of the guitar. Okay, The back and the sides are almost always made of a hard wood. That way the sound mixes all, reverberates and mixes all inside this sound box and then comes out the sound hole. Well, if you had a softwood back here, it would absorb more of that sound and it wouldn't sound as good. So they always use a hardwood like this. Is, this is maple. Usually, they used to almost always build guitars out of Brazilian rosewood, the back and sides. But Brazilian rosewood is an endangered uh, species of tree and they can't cut it down to any new ones. And there's a lot of regulations. You can still find people making guitars from Brazilian rosewood, but that's with old pieces of wood they had or maybe they... Uh, a tree fell over and somebody cut it up for them, but mostly you're going to find is a, a rosewood, but like an East Indian rosewood or something like that on a guitar. It just It's a good sound uh, wood, hardwood, and it has pretty grain, so that's why they use it a lot. There's also koa that's from Hawaii. It's got a real beautiful finish. On the top of the guitar, this is your, these are your sides. This is the back. Most, most don't have a, a design going down the middle, not all of them. And anyway, so this is your, your body. This is called your, your bout. In through here. And so you have your upper bout and your lower bout. Okay? That's not really important to know. But anyway, most people, when they're sitting, they place this, this uh, curve here on their leg and they play. And that's why classical guitar players too. Some people just hold them on a strap and play them. Anyway, so let's talk about the different kinds of guitar. Like I say, this just happens to be a Gibson. Uh, I call it a Blondie. It's an SJ200 in maple. You can get these in uh, rosewood, different things. But the top is spruce, and that's a softer wood that allows the sound to help go out of the guitar and out of the sound hole. So let's start at the very back. You have a pin on the back. Most guitars have this. Sometimes they'll come without them. But this is how you hook up your guitar strap. Now this guitar doesn't have an electronic pickup, but usually the pin, your strap pin, will also be where you plug in a quarter inch cable to run to your sound system. So remember that, they got a pin on the end and you need that to have a strap. You have your top, your strings, 
And like I say, a strict string has six strings. There are actually seven string guitars, eight string guitars, nine string guitars, all kinds of different variants. But your strings come down to these little pegs that you use to hold your strings in place. This right here is the bridge. You'll find different designs on different guitars. But this is the what they call a mustache bridge on a on a uh, Gibson guitar. But this is what holds all the pressure and keeps your strings from breaking off and coming loose. But you, when you string, and I'm going to show you how to string in another video, you use these to lock your strings in. They do make a, they're called pins, but they do make a pinless bridge that has holes. My sound, cell phone's going off. But anyway, they have holes here that you don't have these pins, and I prefer a pinless bridge. I have a Takamini guitar that has that, and I absolutely love it. I wish all my guitars had a pinless bridge. So anyway, here are your strings. This is a pick guard. Not all guitars have them. They're traditionally made like a, a, a tortoise shell. And same with guitar picks. But this is to protect your guitar as you're playing. If you, if you come down and hit it with your pick a lot, you'll notice Willie Nelson's old guitar he calls Trigger has holes all in it from the years and years and years of playing that he's done. So remember, that's your pick guard. Your, your guitar may not have it. Some do, some don't. Some of them have them on both sides. Uh, this is a right hand guitar. Typically, you, you're, I hold it up, I, I do the strumming or the picking with my right hand, and I make the chords with my left hand. Now, if you're left hand, it's going to be just opposite. And when I hold the, the neck out to my left, that's a guitar, a right hand guitar. If I was left handed, it would go out the other side. So, next, we're going to talk about your strings and the rest of the guitar down on that end.